and welcome to Bethan's Kitchen and Garden. Today I am going to be doing a lot of tidying up around the garden. So I've got some celeriac that really hasn't grown and um, I've got an issue with moles on my plot and the mole has run underneath the celeriac and it's made the, um, the underneath of the, the, the compost um, really and secure so the the vegetables have not grown very well underneath that so i've got the celeriac to clear away i've got some shallots to harvest which i should have harvested about three months ago and um i've got some squash to harvest too so it's really windy out so what i'll do is i'll show you um a sort of before and after and um, and then you can see what i've been up to today My next job before I do anything else is to clear these compost heaps. So this far one, which was the first one, has shrunk a lot now. So I need to turn that and then turn as much of this into there as I can. Um, and then I can get on with clearing because at the moment now I've got nowhere to put my compost or my, um, my scraps from the garden to become compost as it were. I'm around the other side now of the compost heap, so I've cleared some of it. This is what is at the bottom, and although it looks like quite good compost, what it is, is it's the sort of top six inches, say, of the chicken um, compost, where the, the chickens are in the coop. This is all like the chicken compost. So I don't want to take that out at the moment. I want it to... Um, decay a bit more so I'm going to leave that bottom bit in until the spring where I'll um, I'll dig it up there and I just need to do a bit of a a bit of a um, attack on to this here because the this side has kicked out a bit uh, probably with the, the weight of the of the compost pushing against it so I in the winter at some point I need to put a post in this side to hold it that way but for the time being I'm just going to put a, a, a bit of wood on here a thick piece of wood so that this can stay in place better because what had happened is this had caved in um, so when it looked like the compost heap was full it wasn't it was just that this bit of wood had collapsed and then you couldn't use the compost heap much more um, because the compost would fall out this way because that was underneath the compost, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to go and fix this bit here and then turn as much of this into here. I'm going to give this a quick water because it is quite dry underneath 
and I've got more cardboard that I want to put in as well so I'm going to layer it up so that I'm putting some of the fresh um, uh, cuttings from the um, Tayberry bushes and blackberry bushes in there then a layer of cardboard then more of this stuff on there and then another layer of cardboard and I'll wet it all as I go and um, I'll show you what it's looking like when I finished so I filled this one now with um, with quite a bit of what was in this one so the level of that one has dropped quite a lot which is good because I can now fill it with um, well sort of with those the beans that need to come out and all that all the other foliage that is probably needing chopping away at this time of the year so all I need to do with this now is put down a layer of cardboard on there and thoroughly soak it and put down a layer of cardboard on here and thoroughly soak it too I've got the cardboard here and I've also put in a couple of handfuls of compost maker every sort of six inches or so as I've been um, been making the heap so hopefully that will make things decompose quicker I've never used this before and I've had it in my shed for about five years so I thought well I better get around to making it now that I've got the heaps so um, yeah that's all good and I, I, I fixed that little bit there but now that I filled this uh, this end is really pushed out a lot again, so I need to sort something for this fairly soon. Um, but yes, it's all at a thorough drench and hopefully it will rot down and I'll get some nice compost towards the bottom of these heaps in spring. Now I've made that space, I better get around to filling it. So I just want to take a couple of the lower leaves off these cabbages here and then I've got some radish here that needs a harvesting so that'll add a bit of extra green to the, the heap. I've got some probably courgette leaves over there that could do with some harvesting and finally I'm going to take down those runner beans and bolotti beans and French beans that I've got there. Oh, as well as giving my plum trees, uh, cherry trees, a, um, a quick harvest. So I'll get on with doing that. I've taken a lot of the outer leaves off these cabbages now. And there are a few good looking cabbages. This one here looks quite good. But this one here, and a couple of them, I've got a lot of black fly on them. So they're not really going to be any good. Um, I'm not really going to want to go through each leaf, wiping off all the black fly. So at the moment, it looks like out of the six cabbages, one I just took out from there because that was not doing any good at all. It looks like we might have three to eat so um that's not too great i suppose and um i've taken out a lot of the radish there and oh, i'll come to the harvest in a second i um i've taken down the pea frames that were there and um you wouldn't believe it but i have tidied up that area because the courgette was coming through um i'm not sure whether I'll take those tomatoes out soon. They are still producing. It's just whether the tomatoes will go ripe or not. And um, I have also made a start on taking down the bean arch. So I've harvested a lot of the Bellotti beans and the runner beans and some of the French beans. So that is probably as far as I'm going to get today. So... I'll just talk through the harvest I've got. I've got those two um, crown prints there. A bit disappointed with the, the, the squashes this year because um, there's no butternut squashes and these are the only other 
squashes we've got. So those are the two tiny Turks turban. For Turks turban, these are quite small. And um, the same for uh, your cheeky curry. They are not very good either. This will probably be the last cucumber for a while and unless the ones in my front greenhouse start producing cucumbers but it has gone a bit cold now these are tomatoes from the greenhouse there's some almond and um, underneath there's various small rosilla tomatoes then there's radish these radishes are very big but um, hopefully they won't be tough in the middle i don't think they should be they haven't been in that long i think they've just grown a lot three courgettes tiny little courgettes carrots now for me this is a good size carrot they um they've done quite well those ones i've got three beetroot and one small one there another variety of carrot this carrot was norfolk i think and this one was early nance and then these are the heinz tomatoes there so uh, a good basket full for them then there's the shallots that i took out from there they've gone in but some of them are feeling a bit squishy so i don't think we'll have that full tray of shallots then these are the dried bolotis they were dried on the plant there's the french beans that uh, i think will still be okay for eating then those are the fresh bolotis which i shall just cook up and freeze and then the runner beans which again i'll just take for the beans and um, i'll just strip the beans out of the pods and cook them up and freeze them as well so that is it from me for today i've um i've got a little bit done around the place i need to do a thorough weed now and um, finish off doing those beans so that will be my next job and in the next vlog i will be carrying on with that and harvesting what's left of my potatoes because i want to get them out of the buckets and um, i can store them in the shed over the winter so that's it from me for today thank you for liking and um watching and subscribing and commenting if you have done so i really appreciate it and uh, all i can say about my work today is lovely job and hopefully i'll catch you on the next one take care everybody bye bye